Hello and welcome back. This is Sherry with Full Armor of God and today I have a message for you from the Lord that has four scriptures. The first is 1 Chronicles chapter 16 verses 1 through 17 in the King James Version Bible. It reads, So they brought the ark of God and set it in the midst of the tent that David had pitched for it and they offered burnt sacrifices and peace offerings before God. And when David had made the end of the offering the burnt offerings and the peace offerings, he blessed the people in the name of the Lord, and he dealt to every one of Israel, both man and woman, to every one a loaf of bread and a good piece of flesh and a flagon of wine. And he appointed certain of the Levites to minister before for the ark of the Lord, and to record and to thank and praise the Lord God of Israel, Asaph the chief, and next to him Zechariah, Jael, and Shemiramoth, and Jehiel, and Matthiah, and El- Eliab, and Menahiah, and Obadiah, and Jeel, and Psalteries, and with harps, but Asaph made a sound with cymbals, Benaiah also, and Jehaziel, the priests with trumpets continually before the ark of the covenant of God. Then on that day, David delivered first this psalm to thank the Lord into the hand of Asaph and his brethren. Give thanks unto the Lord, call upon his name, make known his deeds among the people. Sing unto him, sing psalms unto him, talk ye of all his wondrous works. Glory ye in his holy name. Let the heart of them rejoice that seek the Lord, seek the Lord and his strength, seek his face continually, remember his marvelous works that he hath done, his wonders and the judgments of his mouth, O ye seed of Israel, his servant, ye children of Jacob, his chosen ones, he is the Lord our God, his judgments are in all the earth, be ye mindful always of his covenant, the word of which he commanded to a thousand generations, even of the covenant which he made with Abraham, and of his oaths unto Isaac, and hath confirmed the same to Jacob for a law, and to Israel for an everlasting covenant. The second scripture is the book of Nehemiah, chapter 5, verses 7 through 16, in the King James Version Bible. It reads, Then I consulted with myself, and rebuked the nobles and the rulers, and said unto them, Ye exact usury, every one of his brother, and I set a great assembly against them. And I said unto them, We, after our ability, have redeemed our brethren the Jews, which were sold unto the heathen. And will ye even sell your brethren, or shall they be sold unto us? Then held they their peace, and found nothing to answer. Also, I said, it is not good that ye do ought ye not to walk in the fear of our God because of the reproach of the heathen, our enemies. I likewise and my brethren and my servants might exact of them money and corn. I pray you, let us leave off this usury. Restore, I pray you, to them even this day their lands, their vineyards, their olive yards and their houses, also the hundredth part of the money and of the corn, the wine and the oil that ye exact of them. Then said they, We will restore them and will require nothing of them, so will we do as thou sayest. Then I called the priests and took an oath of them that they should do according to this promise. Also I shook my lap and said, So God, shake out every man from his house and from his labor that performeth not this promise, even thus be he shaken out and emptied. And all the congregation said, Amen, and praised the Lord, and the people did according to this promise. Moreover, from the time that I was appointed to be their governor in the land of Judah, from the twentieth year even unto the two and thirtieth year of our taxer sees the king that is twelve years i i and my brethren have not eaten the bread of the governor but the former governors that had been before me were chargeable unto the people and had taken of them bread and wine beside forty shekels of silver yea even their servants bear rule over the people but so did not i because of the fear of god yea Also I continued in the work of this wall, 
neither bought we any land, and all my servants were gathered thither unto the work. The third scripture is the book of Proverbs, chapter 16, verses 18 through 19 in the King James Version Bible. It reads, Pride goeth before destruction, and an haughty spirit before a fall. Better it is to be of an humble spirit with the lowly than to divide the spoil with the proud. The fourth and final scripture is Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verses 8 through 14 in the King James Version Bible. It reads, Vanity of vanity, saith the preacher, all is vanity, and moreover, because the preacher was wise, he still taught the people knowledge, yea, he gave good heed, and sought out, and set in order many proverbs. The preacher sought to find out acceptable words, that which was written was upright, even words of truth. The words of the wise are as goads and as nails fastened by the masters of assemblies which are given from one shepherd and further by these my son be admonished of making many books there is no end and much study is a weariness of the flesh let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter fear god and keep his commandments for this is the whole duty of man for God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Now for the message received from the Lord God on June the 5th, 2022. Pride without a fall is no pride at all. For pride will not subside or hide away. It is for those sheep who have wandered away from the fold. To be humble is kindness and like-mindedness with respect to God's commandments. No one shall place themselves above anyone else. We are all God's children according to what is written in the book of Chronicles. Vanity is a ruination of souls. Only one God, the Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, is to be worshipped. No idols are to be praised or raised above God. You are His holy temple once you believe on Him. You will be born again unto baptism of the Holy Ghost. Cherish the Lord of hosts, for you are treasured in the eyes of him. Believe your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ died on the cross at Calvary for your salvation. It is a free gift if you choose to accept it and remain faithful unto the Holy Father's laws. In the Ark of the Covenant the covenant will not be broken, for it is a commitment and a promise. A holy convocation, a celebration, is very near on the horizon. The end of the age is approaching. Those who've repented from sinning will be winning my free gift of salvation. My blood sacrifice is sufficient to absolve thee from any iniquity. Pray to be deemed worthy. Do it now, my beloveds, for time is so very short. I exhort unto thee my plea to bring you home with me. I am your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I am ready to come get thee, those who have not gone astray, those who know me in a personal way, those who pray to me daily and ask for forgiveness, repenting from sins. Those are my sheep with whom I want to spend an eternity with on New Jerusalem. The Father and I cannot wait until we see you again at the marriage supper of the Lamb. Your robe will have been washed clean in my blood. Make yourselves ready, my beloveds, those who are lost and lukewarm, those who are sad and forlorn, those who are tired and without joy, 
Come back to me, my beloveds. Time is of the essence now. I will keep my vow unto thee, but you must first believe on me wholeheartedly, exclamation point. I am the Alpha and Omega. My kingdom will have no end. Pray to be deemed worthy, and very, very soon you will be taken with me to your true home, the heavenly kingdom of God, with undying love, God the Father and Jesus of Nazareth. So this message is somewhat of a teaching and also a warning. It talks about pride. It says here, pride without a fall is no pride at all, for pride will not subside or hide away. It is for those sheep who have wandered away from the fold. And to be humble is kindness and like-mindedness with respect to God's commandments. No one shall place themselves above anyone else we are all god's children according to what is written in the book of chronicles and then it talks about how here how vanity is a ruination of souls the, uh, only one god the holy trinity father son and holy ghost is to be worshiped so he's speaking about those who have strayed away and are worshiping idols it says here uh, no idols are to be praised or raised above God you are his holy temple once you believe on him you will be born again unto baptism of the Holy Ghost cherish the Lord of hosts has said here says here for you are treasured in the eyes of him Believe your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ died on a cross at Calvary for your salvation is it is a free gift if you choose to accept it and remain faithful unto the Holy Father's laws in the Ark of the Covenant. And then it continues to speak of the covenant. It will not be broken, for it is a commitment and a promise. A holy convocation, a celebration is very near on the horizon. The end of the age is approaching. Those who've repented from sinning will be winning my free gift of salvation, my blood sacrifice, is sufficient to absolve thee from any iniquity. And then he's telling you to pray to be deemed worthy. I'm just par paraphrasing. These are my words. I'm ready to come get thee, those who have not gone astray, those who know me in a personal way, those who pray to me daily and ask for forgiveness, repenting from sins. Those are my sheep with whom I want to spend an eternity with on New Jerusalem. The Father and I cannot wait until we see you again at the marriage supper of the Lamb. Your robe will have been washed clean in my blood. And then he directs his message to those who are lost and lukewarm. It says here, those who are sad and forlorn, those who are tired and without joy, come back to me, my beloved. Time is of the essence now. I will keep my vow unto thee, but you must first believe on me wholeheartedly. And then he says who he is, the Alpha and Omega. My kingdom will have no end. Pray to be deemed worthy, and very, very soon you will be taken with me to your true home, the heavenly kingdom of God. So, this is a plea to you. And he's addressing both his sheep that are ready to go with him and the ones who are lost and he's trying to convince the ones who are lost uh, that he is the only God worthy of worship and praise and you need to do away with your idols or you will not go up with him into the kingdom of heaven up into New Jerusalem you will be left behind to be refined these are my words so come back to your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and realize that he is your one true blessed hope. That he will take you with him if you believe wholeheartedly and repent from sinning, and you will be winning that free gift of salvation. And may God bless you.